Hey y'all, Vanessa Hogle here. Um, I got on Facebook this morning and uh, let everybody know that I was going to be uploading a video um, this evening in regards to what I call paranormal hypochondria and Munchausen by paranormal. And this might sound a little silly, you know, and yes, I'm always the girl that says, by all means, share your experiences. But we kind of, we kind of got to start being a little wary, okay? Um, especially when we're trying to be taken seriously in this field, all right? Um, I guess it's kind of like the legal process. You know, it you don't want your legal system to be bound up and clogged up and put to almost a standstill by frivolous, made up or exaggerated or ballooned cases, right? Makes sense, okay? Um, I by no means am saying that that's what the majority of the people do, but I do know it happens and I thought that it would be a really good idea to kind of just put a little bit of information out there as to what to look for, especially when your teams that are trying to go in to help people um, when you're individuals who, um, like myself, who get contacted regularly to help people, you know, it, it's something that you need to be made aware of and you kind of need a little bit to be on your guard about. Um, the first being par paranormal hypochondria. Just like in the medical field, you know, when, when you talk about a hypochondriac, it is somebody that if they see it, they've got it. If they read about it, they've got it. If it's a commercial on TV and they've got one of the symptoms, they've got it. Okay. It kind of gives a whole different meaning to, you know, she wants the D. <laughs> okay. To put a funny spin on it, because we all know what I mean on that. But if you're looking at things in the paranormal aspect and the amount of of stuff that's on TV or that certain shows, um, whether they're on YouTube or whether they're on TV or or what have you show or movies, every I mean not everything, but quite a bit out there is super exaggerated. Or everything's evil. Or as Mike and I have talked on the show, everything is a demon. Okay. Hence the D. All right. Um that's what you really do have to be careful about. I mean, do I believe in paranormal activity? Of course I do. I, I couldn't be me and live my life and not believe in what I do. I just don't function that way. But can I also be rational and just, you know, and decide to look at things from all aspects to make sure that even what I'm feeling or seeing or hearing or smelling or tasting can't be explained away. Prime example, sitting in my living room a couple of weeks ago, maybe a month ago, who knows? At this point, I'm fucking tired. I have no idea. Um, light starts flashing above my washer and dryer. Of course, the first thing you're going to go to is, fuck, okay, who's here? Who's here? Y'all. It's my bulb. Okay. <laughs> it's my bulb. All right. The people that live above me stomp around, loosened up my bulb. Okay. I'm not saying that is the case in every situation, but as responsible psychics, mediums, sensitive, paranormal investigators, whatever you want to call us, as responsible human beings, we have to be able to look at things in a rational way when the occurrence seems irrational and make sure that not only are we using that knowledge to help others, but so that we don't get called up in the tidal wave of hysteria that can happen when somebody believes that every single thing 
that especially goes wrong in their life is caused by outwards paranormal interference. Okay? That's dangerous to think that way. It's irresponsible to think that way. And it can cause more harm than good to condone it, support it, and encourage it. Okay? Um, if you have evidence that it is activity and you can help an individual, by all means, please do so. But if the person comes to you and they have these claims and no matter what you do, you cannot get anything concrete or their stories change or there is absolutely no way to verify or um, they seem reluctant to give you any, any details that might help rationalize or explain it away, please take a step back. Unless your heart tells you not to. Unless you believe in your heart that you can help them. Please take a step back because when we encourage this type of behavior, we might be encouraging self-destruction, which leads me into my next thing. Munchausen by paranormal. This is a thing, okay? We all know that Munchausen is, again, just like hypochondriac, um, it is somebody who they, you know, they, they keep themselves ill, okay, in order to receive attention. We have Munchausen by proxy, where they make another ill in order to receive attention or accolades for being an amazing caregiver, okay? And this happens way more than you think, and it's really unfortunate. It's really unfortunate. Um, criminal in the proxy cases, for the most part. Um, because it can be to a child, it can be to a spouse, what have you. It is predominant in females. Women are more likely to have to have this problem. Okay, um, Munchausen by paranormal is somebody who, it in my opinion, it doesn't matter to them what they have to do in order to have activity around them, whether it is fabricating, whether it's inciting, whether it's enticing. Um, it's these people that even when you try to help, and you actually do, you actually do, and you tell them exactly what to do after, they completely disregard all information, all instructions, simply so that they can have that activity again to receive more attention. This is really dangerous, okay? Especially for those of us who deal in cases that are more destructive, that do have a, a higher danger level. Um, this is a really, really, really bad situation to be in. And if you find yourself in a case like this, where you've done everything you can, things appear to get better, and that the person goes completely against your instructions to have that, that activity return, don't walk, run away. Because at that point, there is nothing you can do. And I have been in this situation. I have, I have been out. I have cleansed houses. I have done everything that I was supposed to do. And then I sat down with the people after the fact and said, look, this is gone. Okay. This is gone. Your house is fine. I will need you to update me regularly and let me know 
that everything is okay. And if I have to do anything additional, then I, I absolutely will. And, and by all means, y'all, this is at no charge. Okay, this is my free time doing this. I said, but the only thing I ask is do not in any way try to keep that door open so that you have activity. I said, you've asked me out here to help. And this was years ago that this happened, this really bad case. I said, you've asked me out here to help. You have to listen to me. And it wasn't a week. It wasn't a week that the wife called me and said, he's back at it again. And I said, are you kidding me? And she says, yep, yep. He's pulled out the Ouija board and he is, which is, you know, we're not going to get into that right now, but he pulled out the Ouija board and started trying to talk to him again. And I was like, okay, what did I go out there for? If you're not going to listen, if you're not going to do what we tell you to do, if you're going to basically kick that door open and allow whatever chooses to, to walk through, quit blowing our phones up. Okay? Quit blowing our phones up. Um, because all you're doing is wasting our time. You're wasting our time. You're wasting our energy. You are keeping us from people that actually want to receive help. Okay? I can't be more specific than that. So that's what I want investigators and and sensitives and everybody else to really be aware of is those who come to you in regards to activity and don't do anything you say in order to help themselves are choosing to live that life. You do not have to choose to do it with them. You might want to help everybody else in that house, but you might not be able to. You know, for the most part since then, people listen to me. I've, I've done quite a few negative cases and, and people listen to me. And if they have any troubles through no fault of their own, they give me a call and I do what I can. But there are those who seek this, whether it's the hypochondria portion of it or the Munchausen portion of it, they seek it for attention, whether it's fabricated or real, you know, and that is the hypochondria tends to go more towards the fabrication. The Munchausen tends to go more towards the real. Both are dangerous. One can be delusional. One can be self-destructive. So keep your eye out, look for the signs, um, don't call everybody a fake because everybody's not a fake, but make yourself up a little list, okay? And it's going to be different for everybody, okay? But make yourself up a little list of questions to ask, you know, and use that kind of as a gauge as to figuring out exactly where the people that you're talking to lie, whether it is in real and in need of help, real on the fence about sharing, hypochondria, possibly fabricated, moon, Munchausen, possibly self-destructive. Just try to figure those things out. You are going to save yourself a shit ton of time, um, a ton of energy, and You'll keep yourselves out of situations that tend to be just a, a, a destructive cycle. Okay. Keep in mind the majority of the people out there, all they have to go by is what they see on TV. They're not in the field, they're not on the locations, they're not doing the readings, they're not doing this other stuff. So all they have to go by is what they see on TV. So cut them a break, but protect yourself as well. Okay. 
that was my whole point of it. Um, I probably could go into a lot greater detail, but I forgot I have a I have something I've got to do tonight. But I did want to get this out there. Um, by all means, feel free to share it. Um, if you have any questions, please put them underneath here, and I'll get back to you as quick as I can. I mean, there's no guarantee on how fast it's going to be, but I will do my best. Okay. I love you guys. Bye.